Hey artists, it's Mrs. Alseri. I hope everyone is doing well. For this video, we are going to be taking a trip underwater and drawing sea turtles. So for the first part, we are going to make the body coming out from the bottom corner of the paper. And I like to do it this way because it really shows the size of a sea turtle and it looks like it's kind of swimming across the page. So what we're gonna do is start in this corner and don't be afraid to draw pretty big. Draw one kind of rainbow shape coming out that far. And then you're going to draw another one. It's like a big football shape down to the bottom of the paper. So that might take you a couple tries to get the hang of it. If you need to flip over your paper or erase it, let's try it one more time coming out from the corner, but not the very bottom. I'm about halfway up holding my paper sideways. So go ahead and draw one curvy line, reaching all the way out almost to the other side of the paper. And then another one to finish it off. So it looks like the edge of a big leaf. You are gonna make sh need to make sure that you have room for the head and the fins. So I tried to put mine on my paper in a diagonal, kind of reaching across, because I'm gonna need just enough room to make the head. So if you feel like you don't have space over here, you can erase it and make it a little bit shorter. It's all about adjusting and figuring out what works for you. So although we do want to draw big for this project, too big um, might not be the right thing. So I have about, mm, about a third of my pencil is the size of the head. It's, it's like the end of a bowling pin. Um, so there I have the head and the body. The fins, it's okay if they come off the paper a little bit. So again, if you did draw really large, as long as you have room for the head. The fins are next. I'm going to do the, the top fin first, also making that rainbow shape. And I'm gonna make it kind of bumpy on the bottom. It's like a flipper so they can swim. Sometimes I like to turn my work when I'm drawing. So now I have some space down here. The tricky part with fins is to try to make them the same size. So as long as you start your pencil at the same spot on the opposite side. I'm actually looking at the other fin while I draw this one. It kind of helps your brain um, figure out how to draw the same size. So if this ends up too small or this one's too small, you can adjust it, try to make them even. Sometimes I even use my pencil to try to measure it. Like this fin is about that much on my pencil. Let's check this one. It's a little bit shorter, but I think it looks okay for now. Um, on my turtle, his back legs are actually at the very bottom and so is his tail. So if you want, you could make a little bit of a triangle shape down there to show that the legs are coming off the paper. But if you don't want to and you want to just leave it blank. Or you can actually draw feet if you have room. So those are for the rear flippers. So once I have this main shape started, now you can start adding details. So we're gonna talk about a hexagon. We're gonna put one smack dab in the middle of my turtle. Now the cool thing about turtle shells, if you've ever seen one before, is they have these patterns on their shell that kind of connect over and over again to develop the turtle shell. So I started with this hexagon. A hexagon has six sides, but it's taken me a long time to be able to draw one of those without a ruler. So another thing that you could do if you don't know how to draw a hexagon is to just kind of draw a rectangle with a diamond as the beginning of it. So you can just kind of make it up See how it ends up kind of looking like a hexagon or a pentagon, a five-sided shape? So even turtles 
they're not perfect. They're from nature, so don't be afraid to make your shapes be a little bit uneven, different sizes. Just try your best. I wouldn't recommend doing circles for this just because I feel like these geometric shapes are really what make it a turtle. But also, you don't want to get hung up or frustrated trying to make a perfect hexagon. So just kind of practice, go along with it. If you like that triangle method that I did, start with a triangle, make some straight lines coming out, more of a pentagon or like a house shape. And once I have three or four of those in the middle, I kind of cheat a little bit. I just extend the lines from each corner all the way out. So it looks like I drew all of these hexagons, but I didn't. Okay, <clears throat> he's looking pretty good so far. I like him. I wish I could be swimming with him in the ocean right now. Um, so the next part is probably the face, right? So I am just going to draw one eye towards the very top of the face where his nose would be. And if you've ever seen a picture of a sea turtle eye up close, they're really beautiful. They have huge eyes and they have a pupil and an iris in the middle and then you can give it an eyelid. They have very fancy eyes. If you get the chance and wanna look one up, I would recommend it. Um, so I'm kind of thinking about if I was swimming with my turtle looking up at him I could only see one eye. But if you would like to draw another eye on the other side of the head, I'm gonna draw light and see how it turns out. So football shape, just like the body, put a large circle in the middle, make an eyelid. So if you like that, kind of like you're looking down at the turtle point of view, that is totally fine. I'm just gonna keep the one. <clears throat> but you kind of have to figure out what works for you. And then if you would like, you can put just like some lines right here where their nose is. And sea turtles have beaks, so if you would like to put just a little line right there to look like part of the beak, you can. Um, or you can leave it blank. Or again, we're looking at it from a unique angle, so. Uh, okay, spots and scales. So if you are comfortable with these kind of shapes, you can put some of those on the head and the flippers, but I'm gonna make mine a little bit more curvy. So same thing, they kind of are like hexagons, but they're more blobby, and you don't have to have them all connect. You can even do like a roundish, square or rectangle. I'm gonna put a few big ones on the head by the eye. And I'm even gonna then come down and start to make them kind of come off. This sort of way of drawing things cropped, it's called, where you're, you're sort of zooming in on something, making it go off the paper. That makes your artwork look interesting and it makes people wonder like hmm where is that pattern going okay so i just have some of those now i am gonna continue with that pattern on the flippers but one thing that i've seen with sea turtles um is that they have like this pattern of larger circles right along the bottom edge of the fin. They almost look like toenails to me. <laughs> and a lot of turtles do have really sharp claws. Sea turtle, I'm not too sure about. I haven't asked one in a while. Okay, so I just kind of make those circles along the fins to kind of give it more 3D-ness. And now, same thing that we did to the head, just kind of fill in the rest of the fin with some of those. You can make them come off the fin like we talked about. You can make some of them pointy. 
So I'm not just drawing random shapes. I am following a pattern of these like curved rectangles and hexagons. All right, so whatever I do on this side, I'm gonna kind of try to do the same thing. And always, if you need to practice these shapes on the back of your paper, I definitely have to sometimes, so don't be afraid to practice a little bit. Now I can just kind of do these blobby circles inside. Okay, so I actually, I'm gonna erase my beak because I feel like I didn't quite get it right the first time. I feel like it looks better without from this point of view. But I am going to add some more detail to the eye. Alright, so I can add some spots to the legs down here. We are almost done, guys. The last thing that I want to show you, if you have markers, um, I'm going to pull out like some blues and greens, um, maybe some yellow for my turtle. There's also brown, so if you have a brown marker, I have one here. So these are some colors that I am using today. The blue is for the water, of course. Um, and sea turtles have a lot of hidden yellows and browns also with greens. So if you want to, you can outline it with a marker, a black marker, or you can just start coloring in. So if you're going to try the marker watercolor method, let's see. I think I'm going to outline all of the patterns with green. So this is where, take a second and think about how you want to color before you start. I definitely think color is a huge part of this sea turtle. And if you have a crayon, you can either outline it all with a black crayon. I'm skipping the outlining in black. I'm just going for it with colors. So my shell is going to have a green outline. Just like that. Try not to miss any spots. And then I'm, I'm even, I'm just going to go and outline the whole thing with green. Maybe take a black and I can color in the eye. And for the spots, I think I'll do brown. And if you're doing crayon, you can color these in. But if you're gonna try the marker and water technique, if you've taken any of my classes before or had me as your art teacher, we've done this and it's really, it goes really fast. So you're just gonna dip your paintbrush in water and paint right on the lines of the marker that you just outlined. I gotta go quick because I'm running out of time here. All right, let's just give it a shot with what I have so far. So I have my cup of water, a paintbrush, if it's near your computer, Please keep it as far away as possible because you really don't want to um, spill it and wreck your computer. I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna paint right over the lines. And you guys probably have something like Crayola or something less permanent. So what will happen is all of these lines will turn into like a liquidy watercolor. When you're ready to do it to your spots, Dip your paintbrush back in the water to clean it off, and you can just kind of color. The water has to go right over the marker for it to bleed. So you will probably get a little bit more than mine. Yours will hopefully turn into more paint-like. Mine, I feel like, is a little bit too permanent. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I can't wait to see your sea turtles. They're going to look awesome. Bye, guys.